Superintendent from White Bear Lake, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's student recognition ceremony. Before each board meeting, we recognize students who have achieved uh, state level recognition. And tonight, we honor some of our most musical students, those in choir, band, and orchestra. So at this time, I'd like to invite Ange Nelson, uh, principal at uh, White Bear Lake Area High School North Campus, to come up and get the program started. Welcome, Ms. Nelson. Thanks, thanks. Okay, so the following vocal students earn spots in honor and state choirs. Madison Carroll, SEC Honor Choir. Erica Colby, ACDA. I think, so I think the plan will be, hang on one second. I want to make sure you're recognized properly. We'll read all of the choir names and then we'll invite um, an applause at the end. Yes, all right. So Erica Colby, ACDA, -A Minnesota 910 Honor Choir. Monty Collins, SEC Honor Choir. Mary Enright, SEC Honor Choir. Wyatt Erickson, SEC Honor Choir. Gracie Fink, ACDA, Minnesota 910 Honor Choir, and ACDA Regional 912 Honor Choir. Shane Furlong, ACDA, Minnesota 910, Honor Choir. Olivia Horvath, SEC, Honor Choir. Grant Horrath, SEC, Honor Choir. Claudia Johnson, SEC, Honor Choir. Ryan Crawl, SEC, Honor Choir. David Krizaska, ASCDA, Minnesota 910, Honor Choir. Kirby Masso, ACDA, Regional 912 Honor Choir and SEC Honor Choir. Cecilia McCann, ACDA, Minnesota 910 Honor Choir. Will Muneer, SEC Honor Choir. Justin Nunez, ASDA, Minnesota 910 Honor Choir. Jackson Ogden, Ogden, it's Jackson Ogden, ACDA Regional 912 Honor Choir. Danielle Olson, ACDA Regional 912 Honor Choir and MMEA All-State Choir and SEC Honor Choir. Josh Powell, ASDA Regional 912 Honor Choir and MMEA All-State Choir. Sadie Ring. ACDA, Minnesota 910, Honor Choir. Belle Sarni, ACDA, Regional 912, Honor Choir. Bryce Scherer, ASDA, Minnesota 910, Honor Choir. Noelle Summers, ACDA, Regional 912, Honor Choir. Sophie Verkirke, SEC, Honor Choir. Nate Walkler, ACDA, CDA Regional 912 Honor Choir. Abby White, ACDA Regional 912 Honor Choir. Melanie Young, ACDA Minnesota 910 Honor Choir. Ada Zavagil, ACDA Minnesota 910 Honor Choir and ACDA Regional 912 Honor Choir. Band. All right, Eliza Snortlin is a teacher at North Campus, and then Wendy Suya is also a choir teacher at North and South Campus. So at this time, let's give a round of applause for the students. All right, and students, if you could come on up and get ready for your photo. Parents and guardians in the audience of these students, if you could stand so we can also recognize you and your support that you give our students in White Bear Lake.
right, great job. So now um, the following instrumental students who earn spots in the honor and all state bands and orchestras will be recognized. Amanda Brown, SEC Honor Band. Mason Cox, SEC Honor Band. Emma Duncanson, SEC Honor Orchestra. Dylan Flyer, Augsburg Honor Band. Autumn Grissom, SEC Honor Band. Emma Hass, SEC Honor Orchestra. Devin Helms, SEC Honor Orchestra. Nathan Lilly, SEC Honor Band. Lauren Lapnow, SEC Honor Band. Kyle Petty, Augsburg Honor Band. Joshua Powell, SEC Honor Band. Faith Rockford, SEC Honor Orchestra. Anthony Sabatine, Augsburg Honor Band. Sophie Scroggins, Augsburg Honor Band. Matthew Springer, MMEA Allstate Band and SEC Honor Band. Matthew Wyman, SEC Honor Orchestra. And then Jeremy Rockford and Shannon Anderson are the band teachers at North and South Campus. So at this time, let's give our honorees a round of applause. All right, and if the students can come up for their photo and then parents and guardians of our honorees, if you could stand in the audience and also be recognized. Thank you all for being here. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order this uh, <coughs> independent school district 624. Uh, would the uh, clerk please call the roll? Bloyd? Here. Chapman? Here. Ellison? Here. Mullen? Here. Newmaster? Here. Thompson? Here. Arcand? Here. Would you all please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge Allegiance to the flag of the United States. Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, before us, we, uh, we have an agenda before us. Uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. A motion by Ms. Ellison. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> second by Dr. Newmaster. Um, all in favor of approving the agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The ayes have it. We have an agenda. We also have before us a consent agenda. Um, these are our sundry items. Uh, they come uh, to us every month, and we're uh, very much uh, appreciative of all the gifts uh, that the community provides for our students and for our district. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So, so moved. moved. Motion by Mr. Chapman and a second by Ms. Beloy. Um, this will require a roll call vote. Uh, Beloyd? Aye. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Arcand? Aye. All right. Uh, now we are at the public forum section of our meeting. Uh, typically, if members would like to speak or to address the school board, we ask them to fill out a white card on the table over there. Um, I do not have any white cards available or have any white cards up here at this time. Is there anybody who'd like to address the school board? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to our first informational item, uh, C1, uh, which is the Walzer Foundation grant. Dr. Kazmierczak. Thank you, Chair Mullen. I'd like to welcome Jenny Moore, a Career Pathways Coordinator, to um, share with us information regarding a grant we received from the Walzer Foundation. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Or good morning. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> Chair Mullen and everyone from the board, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to tell you about what's happening in the Automotive Career Pathway in the White Bear Lake Career Pathways Program. Um, as Dr. K said, my name is Jenny Moore, and I am honored to run the Wiper Lake Career Pathways program here at District 624. 
So before I start, I just wanted to show you quickly, if you take a look here, I guess I can look here. Um, on the top left, I just wanted to show you all the pathways that we currently have and kind of where we're headed. Um, if you take a look at the top left there, our manufacturing and engineering pathway started, if you can believe it, six years ago already, thanks to a $250,000 grant from the Greater Twin Cities United Way. And when I started three years ago, we added healthcare, construction skilled trades, and information technology. And this year, is we added automotive to our program. The bottom two, business and education, for our future educator pathway and business pathway, will actually begin next year as well. So we will have seven pathways, and we're really excited to see where all that goes. So staying specifically then with the automotive career pathway, we as, as a Pathways program work with Greater Twin Cities United Way to really focus on best practices and a framework that's going to work for all of our Pathways. And I just wanted to also show this to you to tell you why we applied for that grant. We always focus on specific courses that are relevant to the industry as well as we get feedback from all of our employers. We have on-campus and off-campus experiences as well as some paid internships or some kind of capstone project that would, that's, that's where that sits. Um, and then for the future, we really hope our plan for automotive career pathway is that we really th are trying to look into what we could do for ASE certification at a 912 uh, unified high school, as well as partnership with an autonomous vehicle with the city of White Bear and the chamber. The last thing is an industry recognized credential, and that's the piece that automotive career path pathway was missing. And so that's where we decided to apply for this grant. And so Derek Dusher, if you haven't met him, he's the Automotive Career Pathway Instructor. He's fabulous. He and I did some in-depth research with some industry professionals from the local community about what certification was going to be the most relevant to our students once they graduate. And we decided to land on all data certification. I'll tell you a little bit about what that is. But thanks to Walter Foundation, we received a $975 grant, $1,000 to make it easy for you. Um, and we got a one-year membership for all of our Auto Tech 2 students, which is the most advanced class that we offer at South Campus, um, to all get certified this year and the fall. We anticipate about 50 students will become certified in this. Uh, additionally, that certification for our students will allow them to become certified automotive information specialists. And it's a lifetime certification. And furthermore, we are able to have all of our automotive career pathway students have access to the database. So at any given time, if you can imagine auto classes going on and you think about, you know, things are up on the, the jack or where all their auto terms are, and if a student has an issue that they need to troubleshoot on their own, they can access the database on their own and actually look. So this certification is super... Um, it's very employable for our students because it proves to all of our employers that we are serving today that they are able to troubleshoot, critically think, problem solve any kind of vehicle that, we, that is currently driving on the road. It's a huge incentive and for our students who want to go into the automotive industry, um, it's a really good, it's a win for them as well. And technically it completes or it, it officially rounds out the framework that we're working with for our automotive career pathway. It's, it's grants like these that allow us to continue working with local professionals or local industry professionals and our partnerships and just to continue to offer really robust and, and, and meaningful learning experiences for our students. So that's the grant. All right. Thank you very much. Does anyone Are there have any, questions? any questions or comments? Dr. Arcand, sure. Um, thank you for doing this because this is really important. My only other question I have is, are you going to try to use this as a technical skill assessment when you do your Perkins through your consortium? Because this would be good and if we could get Perkins dollars to help supply for a yeah, future going forward, that would be great. That would be the only thing I would look at. Yeah, that's a great that's a great thought. And I know Derek Dusher is is has is working towards a CTE licensure mm -hmm. so he can be Perkins funded. And I bet you that once he gets. Yep. Um, that licensure that he will most likely but but thank you and, for and that. then and once that you just want to contact Tim Barrett and then you want to ask him to add that to the list of technical skills assessments okay technical skills assessments yep. got it thank you mr. chair I yield the floor back thank you any other comments questions I just personally I just want to say for me this program has grown so much and I really appreciate all your work there for all of our students I mean 
seven pathways that's that's amazing so thank you very much thank you very much for your work and likewise I mean the support from the board and I mean it's really working together to shape the future that's what's so important and we, we really want to pass that message along that it really takes a village and, and that's why we're all here and we're so proud of the work that we do um, I forgot to add that Derek wants to invite you to the state of the shop meeting so I'm just gonna take one pass it down uh, if you've never been to his meetings they are they're fun actually so um, I'll pass these along and and thank you so much for the platform and for your time thank you very much uh, we will now move into our next informational item, uh, C2, which is a superintendent's report. Dr. Kasper, All right, Thank you, Chair Mullen, members of the board. So before tonight's meeting, we recognized White Bear Lake Area High School students who received state-level honors in band, orchestra, and choir. Congratulations, students. The district's February Staff and Community Wellbeing Series session is being hosted in partnership with Ramsey County and other local partners from 6 to 8.30. Uh, p.m. this Thursday, February 13th. The event is Know the Truth, a community forum and prevention presentation on vaping. Mark your calendar to join us for this important conversation. Willow Lane Elementary fifth graders are taking over Donatelli's during the lunch hour for the rest of, of the Tuesdays in February and on March 3rd. Stop in for a terrific meal and great service. Care 11 was on hand to catch the action last week. Uh, highlighted in a video shared this morning. So we're going to show that video. Time for Communities That Care, where we celebrate people making a difference here at home. Some of the best lessons in life come from experience. A little girl from White Bear Lake wrote us this letter right here about her class opportunity to work at a restaurant, so we rushed out and tagged along for the lunch rush. A lot of us learn better by doing. Welcome to Donatelli's. How can I help you today? And that's a philosophy that has fifth graders from Willow Lane Elementary. Perfect. In the kitchen, behind the counter, and waiting tables. Persuasive essay is part of a standard, so why not make it real life? It's so much more meaningful. Lee Anderson takes her lessons out of the classroom and into Donatelli's. Anderson helps the kids write cover letters and resumes, even interview. Then they spend a day working for Trish Appleby and Stephen Donatel. They'll come in and they're nervous like the Dickens when they first start. But they quickly shake it off and get more comfortable. Can you get a smile for your child, please? Mostly smiling and talking to the people and interacting with different people. And I think that will affect us in the future. Orders, and by the end of the shift... They're all excited and they learn something and it's just... It's dynamite. The restaurant does take on additional costs, making sure there's enough staff to help train the kids. It's worth it. What It's giving back to the community and how it helps these students and you see it in their faces. It's just amazing. And the lessons learned today in fifth grade will last a lifetime. So as they grow older, these are the things that you'll look back on and they'll look back on and say, that was a great time. I really enjoyed it. Oh, some talent there. They got a couple of dishes going, no, not dropping two. anything. Good yeah. for them. And smiles on their faces as they're doing oh, it. That is key. <laughs> now, kids get so much out of this. Steven says they come back and apply when they're actually old enough to get a job. Also, the students donate a portion of their tips to Hope Kids, an organization that provides ongoing activities for families who have a child impacted by a life-threatening medical condition. If you know someone making an impact in the community, email, email us at sunrise at care11.com. We would love to share their story. All right, so again, that is on Tuesdays for the rest of February and on March 3rd. So um, community members, board members, it would um, be great if you could stop in for lunch and support that effort. All right, White Bear Lake area students are thoroughly enjoying February's I Love to Read Month, celebrations and activities. Throughout the, um, throughout the month, students will enjoy readathons, guest readers, and special assemblies, to name just a few of the activities. I would like to especially acknowledge our families, school board members, and other community members who are participating in February's reading activities in our schools. And the following celebrations are being recognized in February. Um, it's Black History Month. Uh, February 17th is President's Day. Just a reminder that uh, that's a week from today. There's no school and the district office is closed. And uh, it's National PTA Founders Day also on February 17th. So with that, uh, we'll turn it over to School Board Liaison Madison Carroll for a, for a student update. 
Hi. Um, so I don't know about anybody else, but it doesn't really feel like it should be February February already. It's kind of going pretty fast. <laughs> um, but currently, seniors are working on their college applications and scholarship essays. I believe that um, the school scholarships opened today to write essays, so make sure you're getting on that if you want to make some money for college. Um, last Friday, our varsity and JV gymnastics teams won their senior night meet over Roseville, and a few of our speech team members have placed in the top three at their most recent meets, which is pretty cool. Um, our ski teams have had some athletes qualify for state, which is also awesome, and our choir, band, and orchestra participated in the Suburban East Conference Choir, Fest or Suburban East Conference choir Band, and Orchestra Festival uh, last Monday, um, and some of the choir band and orchestra members were chosen for their all-conference honor ensembles, as we saw earlier. So they did a really good job. Um, the one-act play, Lost in Siena, uh, received outstanding reviews from viewers, as it always does. Our one-act play is always amazing. So we were really, it was really cool to see the actors go out and do their best. Um, our students have been hard at work, and we're so very proud of all the work that they've done. So, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Questions for Dr. Kazmicek on his report? Thank you, sir. Uh, we will move on to our, our only discussion item, board referendum planning process. Dr. Kazmicek. All right, I'd like to welcome Mr. Wald uh, to, uh, to kick this one off. We've got a couple of guests with us tonight, and I'll just turn it over to you. Thank you, Chair Mullen, members of the board, Dr. Kazmicek. Uh, it was just three months ago that our community gave us support to continue our work toward improving our facilities. And so we're, we've been hard at work over those past three months. And with us tonight are Paul Apikowski and Sal Bagley, uh, the lead reps from Wold Architects and Engineers who've been guiding the process for us. Um, tonight they're gonna tell you about the design process that we've been working on, look at our referendum project scope and timeline, as well as uh, community engagement that we have planned. Welcome, Sal Bagley and Paul Aplikowski. Dr. Gillespie and myself will be around at the end for questions as well. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Good evening, Chair Mellon, Dr. Kazmierczak, and members of the board. Thanks for having us. Um, so you should have a presentation in your board pack. I will follow along. Some of it's a little bit hard to read on the screen here. So we're just going to um, introduce you to some of the topics and kind of the structures that we're using to involve people in the process. Uh, the reality is that this is uh, it's an enormous undertaking uh, and it will unfold over time so it will all become clear hopefully as time goes um, one of the things that we entered into this with was the strategic plan that the school district adopted um, the strategic plan has some wonderful goals and initiatives in it um, it's clear that the district has um, many years of work to figure out how to implement that and how to get it down into the classroom level. So one of the things that we recommended going into this process is that we create first um, kind of an overall group that we've called Future of Learning. So we worked with the administration to gather um, quite a few people, stakeholders mm -hmm. into that group. And their, their goal in this process, or their role in this process, I should say, is to try to take the strategic plan and help to start understanding how to get it down into the classroom. And um, as this diagram shows, we see kind of two major portions of that. One is facility standards and one is programming standards. Um, and so we've met with them four times and they've come up with a great start of how to start bridging um, again down into a lower level of things. Um, the facility standards we are going to take in the short term and start turning them into building designs. Um, they, they just really started the process and you'll see the subsequent groups that we talk about will pick up their work and continue that. The programmatic standards are something that we foresee the district um, working on over a long period of time and so this group will get back together periodically as the administration sees fit to continue to work through those things on a strategic level. Um, at the bottom of this diagram you can see um, all of the little bear paws there. Those are our planning groups for all the buildings so every building will have a planning group. So as Paul mentioned, the Future of Learning Committee's, um, their charge was really to make um, alignment or make the jump between the strategic plan and what it means for all these building designs we're working on. Um, so they were asked to review best practices in education as it related to both space design and programming, um, consider effective ways to empower educators and learners, um, study options to address student needs, develop essential characteristics of learning spaces of the future, including important space types and relationships, and create parameters. So all of their work will be funneled down into all of the core planning groups that are to come. 
And um, that group produced a volume of, of information. So there's some shorthand versions, kind of a one-page summary of some of their work that we'll be using. There's also um, several more pages of ideas, concepts, and things for the groups to test out as we go forward. As we work into the facilities side of that diagram now, um, each of the school projects will have a core planning group, um, is the term that we use. That is a group of stakeholders that comes together and really works collaboratively with us to design the building. Um, their work obviously is done on uh, a certain level. There's a lot of technical things that um, we and our consultants will work through, but that group really is charged with helping us develop the philosophy and the relationships and how the building will function. Um, so that will consist of uh, stakeholders, including teachers, um, some administrators, parents, um, and when appropriate, students. Um, certainly for the older, older age groups, that will include students. Um, and they make a recommendation up to the administration and then eventually, obviously, the school board has final oversight over all of the things that are happening with the buildings. Um, another level of design, so that core planning group will vary from um, maybe as little as uh, half a dozen people on some of the smaller projects to dozens of people on the larger projects. Um, uh, so that will involve um, quite a few people through that process across the district. We also go to another level. Once that core planning group has helped us develop a floor plan, a schematic for the building, we will then go reach out to more stakeholders in the buildings for all of the spaces that are affected. We call those user groups. Um, so this drawing on the right is an example of that. Um, we will take every room in the, in the district in the project that we're affecting and we will go meet with the users of that room and talk to them about in great detail about what kind of flooring there will be, um, where do the outlets go, where do the light switches go. And in doing that, we'll touch um, really hundreds of people across the district will be a part of the projects as we go. A big part of the goal of that process is that when people move into spaces, they know what they're getting, that it's not a surprise when they move in. They're actually moving into the room that they designed rather than a, a, a space that they're going to have to learn to adapt to it once they get in there. So this chart is really just a more text version of the diagram we started with, but now that you understand some of the terms we're using, it might have more relevance. So um, obviously all of these groups are eventually reporting to the school board. Um, another group we didn't spend much time talking about yet is the district's um, facilities or steering committee. Um, so we meet about every two weeks with um, an administration to prepare for upcoming meetings and um, if there's um, homework between meetings or additional study topics or resources, we process those um, as well as talk about schedule and budget. Um, so those are um, sometimes every two weeks, sometimes about a month. Um, and then the Future of Learning Committee met four times initially, but they might be reconvened for certain topics. Um, and then below that, you can see the core planning groups by project and site-based planning groups by project. So that's kind of the big picture. Um, so we can talk about how that process is applying to your projects now. Um, I won't read all the projects back to you, um, but again, the themes are district-wide additions and renovations to accommodate enrollment growth. Uh, safety and security improvements, deferred maintenance projects in classrooms, and building updates to create flexible learning environments. Um, this is the detailed list of referendum projects that I'm sure you've become very familiar with with all your informational meetings. Um, so where we are at in timeline, um, that Future of Learning Committee met twice in December, twice in January. Um, and we are now um, rolling with the new elementary school and the high school core planning groups. So I think they're about um, between 20 and 25 people on each one. Uh, the new elementary core group is made up of representatives from across the district, so multiple elementary schools, um, and similarly the high school from both campuses, um, all departments, so wide variety of stakeholders. Um, for the elementary, they had their first meeting, actually they both had their first meeting on Thursday, January 30th, and the elementary school took tours all day last week, Tuesday, um, of four similar metro examples. Um, and the high school is doing that tomorrow, actually. So we're going to four high schools tomorrow. Um, and then they'll meet about every two weeks, each group, um, for six meetings for the elementary and eight meetings for the high school. Um, and that wraps up what we call schematic design. And then we will move into design development, um, which is when those user group meetings happen. So for the elementary school, we will um, wrap those up um, over the summer, and then we'll move into construction documents um, by the end of November. We need to finish drawings that they'll go out for bid um, in early 2021. Um, and the new elementary school is planned to open fall of 2022. Um, the high school is on a little bit longer timeline due to the scope of the project. So that's intended to bid in spring of 2021. Um, and we'll um, likely start construction summer 2021. And we'll open in phases over the next four years um, with the grades being re, uh, together um, in 2024. 
Um, these are just a couple of pictures from the Future of Learning Committee. So we had quite a large group there. I think we had 65 people plus administration or other resources. So just a picture from one of our meetings. We certainly filled this room up. Um, and then the last night we had a um, sketch artist, a teacher in the district, do a kind of a live rendering of the conversations that the group had. And um, this is a fun graphic that we'll have to figure out how to get distributed. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the um, things that have already happened, but to preview what's about to happen, um, you can see this is a little bit hard to read, but um, the blue um, boxes represent months in which design is intended to happen. Yellow is bidding, and um, the orange is construction. Um, so this is the intended phasing pro uh, plan of the entire referendum. So you will see that um, the new elementary and the high school have already started and conversations on the bus garage are underway. Um, but there is a wave of four elementary schools um, that are being called the phase one elementary schools that will start in March. So um, Lincoln, Matoska, Vadness, and Willow will all start their core planning groups in the very near future. We're working out dates right now. Um, with the other four elementary schools, Birch, Lake Ayers, Onika, and Otter to start early next year. Um, the South Campus Gym has also already started its work and is um, well underway. And then last but not least, we actually have um, started the ALC, um, the renovations <coughs> for security. So their main office group has been meeting about once a week, actually. We started the design. Construction yes, will be yes. over the summer. Exactly. Um, so above and beyond involving your own stakeholders, it's um, a value to involve the entire community. So a couple listening sessions have been set up in the near future. So for the high school, that will be on Tuesday, March 24th. Um, and it'll be at North Campus from 5 to 6, and at South Campus from 6.30 to 7.30. And then the following Thursday on the 26th, it will be from 6 to 7 at Onika to discuss the new elementary school. And with that, we thank you for the time and welcome any questions. All right, thank you very much. I know there's a lot of information. Is there questions? It's Beloy. I, I don't know if we have the answer to this yet, but I thought I'd ask anyway because I've had people asking me. So the gym that we're adding to South Campus is located where on the building and how many basketball courts? <laughs> it's on the, it's north of the, it's on the grassy area north of the existing building. So like uh, just across Rim Road from the stadium in that grassy area. By the, by the tennis courts? Um, north of there. Because there's the parking for teachers right there, isn't there? No, so the other direction. So it's- <laughs> mm -hmm. so Around the corner. Uh, right. My other north? You, the other north, the opposite north of what you're thinking. <laughs> 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 so uh, I don't know how to describe it uh, without a picture, but it's, um, you know where the gym is now. Mm -hmm. So if you were um, sitting and facing the basketball teams during a game, you'd be to your left out that direction. That's where the- that's where we we'll go. And it'll be large enough for two um, full-size courts. Two full-size? Yeah. Okay. So that's about the size of the one that we have now, correct? Yeah. Do you know the dimensions exactly, Tim? Approximately, yeah. It's pretty close to that. It's a, a large, it's a, um, yeah, it's a, uh, the, the one, uh, the w one way the court would be as large as the competition gym at South, and, but then divided, but it, it'll be large enough to be able to divide into two. So there'll be. Are we touching the other, or the other gym too, or is it just the addition? No, just, just the addition. The addition. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. We did some renovating of the existing gym a few years ago. We put in a new floor, um, put in a new curtain that drops down. We did some painting, so that, that gym's in pretty good shape. Yeah. There's more work to happen at South, but that'll be a couple years out as transitions are ready to happen. Okay, thank you. Other questions, comments? Okay. Thank you guys very much. Really appreciate uh, the update. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. All right. We'll move into our first operational item, uh, E1, which is the action on the revised fiscal year 20 budget. Mr. Wald. Yeah, thank you. The preliminary budget for the 2019-2020 school year was approved by the board in June of 2019. And then as is typical, we bring a revised budget to the board mid-year. So in January, at the January 27th uh, work study session, uh, the board reviewed the proposal for the revised budget. We had discussion at that time, and now tonight we'll bring the revised budget for your approval. I'll point out uh, just a few highlights of the revised budget. <clears throat> when you look at the actual 2019 budget, 
Our revenues ex uh, were exceeded our expectations by about $750,000, which is a positive thing because our, we were able to keep our expenditures spot on. When we calculated how far off we were on our expenditures, we were three ten thousandths of a percent off on expenditures. 42,000 on 117 million in expenditures, pretty close. So we expected that we would draw down our fund balance by three and a half million uh, 2018, 2019 school year. And so we did a little better than that. We were just under 2.8 million. And so the unassigned um, as a percentage of expenditures, unassigned fund balance as a percentage of expenditures was um, a little healthier than we expected. Thought we'd be around 11.4 at the end of last year and it's at 11.7%. So as we looked at um, our projected 2020, this is the numbers um, that were approved at the June 10th school board meeting. We, we again expected that we would draw down our fund balances by just over half a million dollars last year, and we did much better than that. We had um, some increases in revenue that we weren't sure we would get in June, and that was when the uh, legislature made a commitment that they would address the cross-subsidy and the special ed funding cap. As you know, most school districts in Minnesota have um, far more expenditures for special ed than they get in reimbursement. Wiper Lake, that number was over $10 million. And so when the state made the commitment to address the cross subsidy and the cap, we ended up being um, in, a pretty good, in a pretty good place. It's a small percentage of our cross subsidy, um, but it certainly helped us. So we had about 1.7 million additional <coughs> money in special ed, and we had some grant and one-time school safety money that added, all that added up to about 2.2 million additional dollars in revenue. Um, and so we did have some additional expenditures as well. The grants required expenditures, so that grant money was money in, money out, because you know you're gonna spend the grant money. The school safety money is a one-time expenditure, <clears throat> or one-time revenue and one-time expenditure. So we ended up with, instead of a $527,000 draw from our fund balance, we are projecting that we'll have a $531,000 positive balance at, uh, for revised 2020. That'll bring our fund balance up to 12.4%. Now recall that the board policy is 12.5%. Uh, we didn't expect that we would get this close to it this year, but um, we're, we're hopeful that this budget plays out and we're um, at that 12.4% number. As we look forward to the next two years, as we always do at this time, and in this spring, we'll be working with the board toward our proposed uh, fiscal year 2021 budget. Um, we are projecting um, about $4 million more in, in um, revenue, and we, we believe that there's gonna be a little more help with special ed resources that will help us with that. Um, it, uh, we should see a little bit uh, further improvement in the fund balance up to 12.7%. And then 12 point, in 2020, we see that going up to 12.9%. And that's a couple years out, and so we don't know what will happen. Uh, we think we're pretty conservative with our revenues, but we also think we're pretty conservative with our expenditures in, 20, in the 2022 model. But that's the things are trending in a, in a positive direction, so we'll, we're um, pleased to be able to report that tonight. So the recommendation uh, from administration is that the board approve the revised fiscal year 2020 budget. You've heard the recommended action. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. A motion by Mr. Chapman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. Newmaster. Any discussion regarding the recommended action? I know that this was discussed at length in a work study session. So um, I know that there were asked a lot of questions there. That's true. Okay, um, Ms. Bloy. Do we have any plans to bridge that $47,000 gap? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> the $42 <laughs> gap. <laughs> Very good job coming that close. Yeah, that's remarkable. Other it questions? May, it may never happen again, so <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> I found it amusing. <laughs> I think our auditor was even surprised when he came upon that. How could that number be so close? <laughs> All right. Other questions? Uh, this will require a roll call vote. Beloyd? Aye. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Arcand? Aye. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we, the motion passes and we will move on to 
E2, which is the action on approving the annual resolution directing the administration to make recommendations for reductions in programs and positions and for and reasons therefor. Mr. Mons. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Kazmierczak. Um, this evening, I'm seeking your approval. This is a statutory step uh, that we really need to take every spring. It's our fervent hope that we will not need to make such a resolution or a recommendation in the future. However, we do need to ensure that we um, move through this step in case there would be anything that would require us to non-renew a non-probationary staff member. And so, um, and that can happen for multiple reasons. We don't anticipate making any um, significant budget reductions this year, but that being said, something as simple as a teacher coming back from a leave of absence can, can cause that kind of a, uh, a resolution to, to need to be acted upon. Okay. This is an annual resolution. I know that we passed it about this time last year. That's correct. Okay. There's a resolution in the packet uh, that has been printed. Uh, there is a recommended action to approve the resolution. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. Motion by Ms. Ellison. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Beloy. Is there any questions regarding the resolution? Seeing none. Uh, this will require a roll call vote. Lloyd, aye. Chapman, aye. Ellison, aye. Mullen, aye. Newmaster, aye. Thompson, aye. Arcand, aye. Okay, well, resolution passes. Thank you very much. We will now move on to our next operational item E3 action on acceptance of bids for 2020 uh, partial roof replacement projects at Matoska. Mr. Wald. Mullen. Uh, in the board packet tonight are uh, bid tabulation sheets related to a partial replacement of two roofs, one at Matoski International and another at Wiper Lake Area High School South Campus. These projects are part of the long-term facilities maintenance plan um, that the district has developed and is board approved. And, and the funds for this project are from the 2018 uh, LTFM bond issue. These are not from the uh, recent bond referendum. With us tonight is our Director of Building Operations, Dan Rozier, and he'll tell you a little bit about the projects. All right, thank you. Mr. Rozier, good, good evening, evening, everyone. In early Jan January, we solicited bids for uh, two roofing projects, a smaller project over at Matoska on the east end of the building. It's a 28-year-old section of roof, 7,000 square feet. The low bidder on the project was Peterson Brothers Roofing, and uh, the amount was $142,230. And at the same time, uh, we went out for bid on a South Campus project, much bigger piece of roof, about 71,000 square feet. Uh, that's about 25% of the roof at South Campus. So it's a big project. It's over on the uh, southeast corner of the building, pretty much that whole corner. And the low bidder on that project was Central Roofing for the amount of $1,257,700. And that section of roof is uh, 26 years old. Oh. So the recommendation is that the board move to approve the two low bids for the two projects. You've heard the recommended action. Is there a motion to do so? so a motion by Dr. Newmaster. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. Arcan. Any discussion regarding the motion? Ms. Bloy. I just have one question. So this was from the, um, the LTFM bonds that were in March of 2018. So we're two years past that. What's the, is, does it take that long to get the bids or why is this two years later? I, if you don't mind, I can, the, the bond issue from 2018 was intended to cover three years worth of LTFM projects. So we're in. So this is just one two. of many things one of that were several over a period over a number of years. Okay. Yep. The proceeds cover the projects over a number of years. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Newmaster. I just have a question on a, a related roofing project as we've had discussion and future plans for adding more solar arrays as the roofs are repaired. Is there going to be enough good new roof now so that the solar arrays will continue their march 
Absolutely. Uh, South Campus will definitely give us some more opportunities for solar. And we've actually got two more roofs that'll come up. Uh, probably will be back to the board in April, at the April meeting. Over at North Campus, we're going to replace a substantial amount. And then here at District Center Central, we've got a, a big roofing project. So once them are complete, then we'll uh, head back to our solar company and see what other opportunities we can go from there. Dr. Newmaster, you would have been proud. On uh, Thursday of last week, we had a team from White Bear Lake that spoke um, at the MASBO conference, Minnesota Association of School Business Officers, regarding sustainability efforts in White Bear Lake. And one of the projects that Mr. Rozier highlighted was, um, was our solar projects, got a lot of attention on that. But the star of that show is Madison Carroll, our student liaison to the school board, and uh, she spoke to a room full of Minnesota business administrators about sustainability efforts, and they were quite impressed. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Thanks. Perfect. Other questions, comments? All right, seeing none, this will require a roll call vote. Beloyd? Aye. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Arcand? Aye. Motion passes, thank you very much. Thank you. We will now move to our next operational item, E. For the action on approving the uh, tentative agreement 2019-2021 uh, contract with IUOE local unit number 70, the custodial unit. Um, Mr. Mons. Yes, thank you very much. Um, we had a really productive round of bargaining um, with our custodial group this round in Local 70, so I would like to thank them for participating in a really solution-oriented and problem-solving uh, round of bargaining here. That's always appreciated. We are able to move quickly through that, which was great. Um, uh, thanks, too, to the team uh, that I worked with there, um, Tim Wald, Tom Zorick, and Rebecca Edberg the Human Resources Department uh, for all the work that they put in. Um, with that, I will ask the clerk to read the whereas, and then uh, from there we'll accept, uh, ask for a motion to approve the agreement. Whereas the parties have reached a ten tentative agreement on the July 1st, 2019, June 30th, 2021 contract, whereas the employees have ratified the contract. Then be it hereby resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 624 approves the 2019-2021 agreement and authorizes the chair and clerk to execute the agreement on behalf of the school board. And I would ask for a motion to do so. So moved. A motion by Mr. Chapman. Second. Second by Ms. Thompson. Uh, any discussion regarding the motion? Hearing or seeing none, uh, this will require a roll call vote. Beloyd? Aye. Chapman? Aye. Ellison, aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Arcand? Aye. Motion passes. And we will now move to our last operational item, E5, action on approving the tentative agreement 2019-2021 contract, uh, IUOE, local unit 70, transportation unit. Mr. Mons. So I will thank our transportation uh, <laughs> group for uh, for participating in an equally collaborative process. It's greatly appreciated when we can come to the table uh, in that way, and I will consider my team duly thanked. All right, thank you. <laughs> I would ask the clerk again to read the, re uh, the whereas and the resolve, uh, and then I will ask for a motion to do so. Whereas the parties have reached a tentative agreement on the July 1st, 2019, June 30th, 2021 contract, whereas the employees have ratified the contract, then be it hereby resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 624 approves the 2019-2021 agreement and authorizes the chair and clerk to execute the agreement on behalf of the school board. Uh, you've heard the resolution. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. Second. A motion by Ms. Thompson, a second by Dr. Arcan. Uh, any discussion regarding the resolution? Hearing or seeing none, this will require a roll call. Lloyd? Aye. Chapman? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Mullen? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Arcand? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have now got into the portion of the meeting under board forum, uh, the allowing school board members to, to, uh, to talk about what they'd like. So with that, I will open up board forum. Dr. New Newmaster. Well, I always read through the retirements and things like that. And I would like to thank a retiring 
uh, head cook, Barb Lund, who retired actually the end of December. So she started her well-earned retirement. But I want to thank her. I worked at North Campus, where she headed up the kitchen for many, many years. And she had at least 25 years of serving our students and staff meals that were served with school spirit and fun and a smile. And she and her team made the school day better for staff and students every day. I can't imagine the job they, they face with the horde of us coming through in such a short period. So thank you and best wishes to Barb. Anybody else under board forum? You to go, sir? Dr. Arcan. Uh, last month I had an opportunity to attend uh, a, a open house at our no Northeast Metro 916 Career Technical Education Center and I'll, I have the pamphlet that they've given me. Uh, it's a great opportunity that they, they've actually been in our backyard and we worked with them since like 1972 where our students have an opportunity to go gain uh, college uh, credit and skills in the work workforce that they can be used and so they've done a nice job filling out career pathways in all six of the career fields um, anywhere from the automotive to the cosmetology to the health science to uh, some of the business entrepreneurship and so they've really worked hard um, so this is an opportunity for our kids to go there get a jump on a degree and then they can take that, either they can go to Century and finish, or sometimes they can take it other places. So I just wanted to share that, that, that uh, our students have a great opportunity um, to earn college credit and to learn from people in the field. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Anybody else, anything? Ms. Thompson. Uh, I had the pleasure of attending with uh, Dr. Newmaster the SEC uh, conference festival that the students put on and uh, our liaison here was part of that wonderful performance. I just want to say it was absolutely beautiful. I was very impressed and uh, had I not been told I was listening to students in high school, you could not tell the difference. It was absolutely wonderful. So just wanted to send a little thank you to, to the music department that helps teach those students at all the different schools that were part of it and to the students for all their hard work. Good job. All right. Anything else under board form? All right, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. And I will second that. We are adjourned. <laughs>